So if you don't know, this is my oldest daughter. This is my youngest son. That's Malachi. We're here to talk about Virginia today. So this doesn't have to do with all the craziness that's going on in the world and everything, but I thought we could hopefully be an encouragement to you guys. He's being very loud today. Virginia has been taking the time while we've been self-quarantined to practice her Bible memory. But this is the 16th book of the Bible she's memorizing. So this started long before coronavirus. She's also been spending her time helping around the house with preparing meals and holding babies and burping babies and all the stuff that goes with babies. Um, she's also just been playing games with her siblings and using her time to encourage Christians and also to um, share the gospel with people. She's been writing to some um, people who are of a different religion and do not believe in the same God that we do. Um, I don't know how much we want to get into there, but um, she's been sharing a true gospel message and showing them where their beliefs do not line up with the Bible. So we are very encouraged that she's been doing all of this um, through her own efforts, um, through her own studies. And now she's going to do something for you. She's going to, she's going to tell you something she remembers. I'm going to go out because I hear children in the other room. <laughs> okay. Colossians 4. Masters, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the word, to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Tychicus will tell you all about my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him, Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions. If he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice, these are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, struggling, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and in Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea and to Nympha and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. Another perfect one. So what's next? Philippians. Why? Because that's what Daddy chose. <laughs> <laughs> I do the Bible memory, but I ask Daddy which ones he thinks I should be memorizing next. So I'm going to do Philippians, and then the other epistles that I have are First and Second Thessalonians and First and Second Corinthians. So why do you memorize the Bible? I find that it helps me a lot in... Um, ministry and being able to share the gospel with people. I don't have to come up with my own words. Um, I can use the word of God, which is living and active. And the gospel is the power of God and the salvation. And it's much better to be able to just say what God has said and then trying to come up with my own clever things. So that's just one way that I've found that it helps me. So do you find yourself thinking biblical thoughts more than your own? Like, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how how that comes together. I know for me, I've memorized a lot of Bible when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And I find that I fall back on those things and kind of it guides my thoughts. Do you find that happening when you're, let's say someone says, oh, I don't believe that God is one God and three persons. Like, mm -hmm. it, I do think of scripture verses yeah. and being able to say those in witnessing opportunities. It's a pretty handy tool. Yes. I like it. Definitely. You hate being on camera. 
So what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like doing these videos. Just to terrify me. No, just kidding. Just, just to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> So what's, what's next? Uh, Philippians is next? Yeah, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to do First and Second Thessalonians or First and Second Corinthians. Those are long. Yeah. But they're good. Right. First and Second Corinthians would probably take me a long time. If I did a chapter a week, it would still be multiple months. I would still be like four months for each of them, so that might take a while. Yeah. Yeah. Because Romans is 16 chapters, too. How many is Hebrews? 13. 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah, 13. So it would take me a while, but also I might have more time to work on Bible memory, so it might take me less. Hmm, that's true. Months to memorize. Because you've been fairly busy, even though we're stuck here at home. <laughs> stuck yes. at home! Yes, very busy stuck yeah. here. With school and ministry and all that stuff. So. Cool. And you've been writing blogs. Oh, yes. I just wrote one blog post on young women preparing for marriage, and then I'm working on one about a church that we got to visit in Tennessee. So that'll be fun because we get to do an interview with some of the men from the church. So maybe you should memorize 1 Corinthians chapters 11, 12, 13, 14. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Those might be very pertinent to our discussion. That might be, and then go back and yeah. memorize the other ones later. That might be an idea, like the big chunks. Yeah. To you on. That's an idea. Instead of doing a whole book, you can just do a chunk of a book. <laughs> I know, crazy. <laughs> like, okay, so you're 16 years old. And you've memorized 16 books of the Bible. Yeah. It's, it's pretty decent. One a year. <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> so you'll have 17 books memorized by the time you're 17. Because you don't turn 17 until May. Right. So you've got like six weeks to memorize four. How many Philippians? Three chapters or four? Four. Four. Four chapters. So you think you can pull that off by your 17th birthday? Yeah. 17 books by 17? Yeah, I think I can do All that. Right. Let's try for that then. Okay. We'll see how it goes. Say bye-bye.